This is lesson two for module two, wind turbine designs. In this presentation we're going to talk about the turbine orientations, the horizontal axis wind turbine, and the vertical axis wind turbine, and also talk about airfoils, which is the basically the blades and how they're contoured and shaped an introduction to designs, um, the concept of blade pitch control, um, different subtypes, and design considerations as well. Uh, two different types here. Uh, we have the vertical axis wind turbine, where the axis is vertical, and rotations like this, and the generator is usually at the base. This type of um, this particular type of vertical axis wind turbine is called an egg beater or Darius wind turbine, and this is vertical axis. It can be on a tower, lattice, anything like that, and it rotates about a hori horizontal axis. So the shaft of it is uh, on the horizontal plane. We'll go to airfoils. Turbine blade on a wind generator is called an airfoil. They're slightly different for each type of wind turbine. And this shows how lift works. This is similar to an airplane wing where wind comes in at a certain speed and it's forced to go over the top and some of it's forced to go under the bottom. The air passing across the top will have have to travel a further dis distance across the top of the airfoil and since it must go across the top there is a lower pressure with this air passing through here. On the bottom, the pressure is a little bit greater than at the top, and this causes lift. So again, if we look at the image here below, the incoming airstream with some given velocity is split as it meets the surface of the blade, and the air on the top of the blade passes over a greater distance. So the overall distance traveled across the top is greater, and this causes a pressure drop and pressure difference between here and the bottom. And as the wind continues to move across the blade, it would have lift in the upward direction, referring to this. And this is a cross-sectional cutaway of the blade. And that causes the air on the bottom to push the blade. When this is connected into a shaft and there are multiple blades, you get rotation. You can get rotation with one single blade, but then it requires balancing. And just as a note, velocity is a rate of change with directions. So it's speed and direction is velocity. Um, this kind of shows what the cutaway looks like. You have the blade going out to the tip. This is the root of the blade that mounts to the what's called the um, hub. And the rotation would be this direction. This shows the axes. Air passes through like this and there would be slight lift, very small. It would actually need to be angled a bit more and you would get more push on the bottom than on the top and that would cause it to rotate. Pressure one would be lower than pressure two. The angle um, 
that the wind strikes the turbine blade is called the angle of attack. So if you look at this, A, there is zero or no angle of attack. The blade's sort of flat against the wind. And it would have slight lift, but not much. And then B shows us the blade is tilted slightly upward. So the pressure is even greater on the bottom as the wind impacts the surface of it. And it, on the other side, there's a great amount of um, low pressure, and that would make it um, have a little more torque in this upward direction. And again, this is the blade profile, so this is a cross-sectional cutaway. We're not looking at the whole blade. This is it cut. And C shows that the blade is tilted to its maximum position. And once it gets higher than its than this large angle of attack, once it becomes a little more flat, then it will actually just press against it and it will not it will lose power. There'll be a point where you have maximum uh, basically torque or energy associated with the blade. And that angle, that's the critical angle. Um, that angle that's most efficient rather is the critical angle and it varies also with different wind speeds. So the critical angle at a wind speed of 5 meters per second may differ from the wind when it's at say 20 meters per second or 10 meters per second. So it's um, designs often use control systems to actually vary, especially on larger systems, to vary the uh, angle of attack so that it's it can harness the most power and energy from the wind. Continuing on with airfoils, it should be known that drag is a force acting against an object's intended path. I'm an example, if you replace your cupped hand out a car window, the wind moves your hand backwards with a great force and if you lay your hand flat it does so with less force that's basically wind drag and moving your hand against the force of drag is more difficult with your hand cupped than if your hand is flat and horizontal held out horizontal um, these aerodynamic inefficiencies also occur in wind power devices and losses associated with them are expressed as a coefficient which is a dimensionless number The coefficient in later on in the equations acts as a correction factor, basically. It includes the inefficiencies of the blade, its drag, stuff like that. A typical drag coefficient for a wind turbine blade is only 0 .04. And by comparison, a typical automobile, which modern automobiles have a pretty decent drag coefficient, it's fairly low, and it's 0.35, so you can see that the drag coefficient for a wind turbine isn't that much, but for an automobile there's definitely some there. And you can think with an automobile how much performance and fuel mileage is lost due to those aerodynamic properties. When the wind speed increases, the amount of drag against the blades also increases. And the lower the drag coefficient, the better aerodynamic efficiency it has for higher wind speeds. So to kind of recap this, drag does happen, is an acting force on the wind turbines and not all of the um, wind power, if you will, can be harnessed by the blade. Some of it has to do with inefficiencies. Some of it's taken away by inefficiencies. Um, designers use the concept of stall to control the horizontal axis wind turbines, and this is pretty much the airfoil design concepts now when you're dealing with blade pitch, um, would be horizontal axis wind turbines where their, their rotors basically look like fan blades or propeller blades. And the horizontal or the vertical axis wind turbines usually don't have a pitch control. If they do, it's it's 
a special design or some kind of a concept design. Um, they they use this to this concept of stall to keep it from basically over speeding or over rotating the generator. And stall occurs when the turbine blade is flat against the wind and it can no longer create any lift. So it's just pushing against the surface of the blade and it's not able to rotate. It's not going around the airfoil as it should, it's just blowing against it. When the blade's pitch is changed on a hot to a point that it begins to stall, the turbine rotor will slow down. And this is done by pivoting the blade at the rotor. So they rotate the blade slightly, so just like when you have your hand out the window, you're turning it a little bit to the point where it's just getting wind basically blown flat against it and it can't really do anything. This is sometimes called furling the blades. And on stall regulated horizontal axis wind turbines, the blades do not adjust during operation. The basic design of the blade itself will cause it to stall naturally when the wind increases to an unsafe speed. So basically once it rotates too quickly, it can't really go any faster due to its own aerodynamic inefficiencies. The lift to drag ratio is the value of lift that's compared to the value of the drag, or value of drag. The higher the lift value and the lower the drag value provides a higher lift to drag ratio, which is a more efficient turbine. You want it to have um, a lot of lift, which would be good torque, and no drag so it's not wasting anything as far as the inefficiency goes. Most turbine blades are designed with the highest lift to drag ratio towards the tip of the blade, which provides the most torque. As you may understand, if you have a lever, if you pull on the very end of the lever, you will have more torque. It's like if you've ever used a cheater bar on a wrench or something like that. So they designed the end of the blade to have the best lift to drag ratio. And of course the drag that's caused by the blade is not cons uh, not con a constant. As the wind speed increases, lift and drag increases with the square of the wind speed. We'll talk about that later on. When the air becomes denser, the amount of drag is increased because it's, it's a thicker, basically it's like a liquid. Um, it becomes, um, so just like drag, um, say you run your hand through the air and you run your hand through water um, when, I mean it's not like the air becomes as thick as water but it's kind of a comparison that when it does become thicker it does change the aerodynamic properties because what's pushing against it is thicker so it's more difficult and that makes the drag coefficient change it makes the drag overall, the overall drag increase um, this happens with colder air because colder air is denser. Even moist air, uh, moist air is 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 more dense as well. And looking at the airfoils again, uh, the tip of the hot blade travels at the highest speed. You see it's rotating here fairly slowly, usually around mm, probably one revolution every six seconds or so. And the tip has to follow that path. And with these larger wind turbines, these larger horizontal axis wind turbines in particular, the tip speed is very quick. It's moving at a high rate of speed and the tip speed is defined as the angular speed of the tip of the blade. It's following this circular path. Um, high tip speeds are needed with large um, and small wind turbines to make the blade more efficient. For these large wind turbines that are around one to two megawatts, uh, this tip speed is around 140 to 200 miles per hour. And these blades usually 100, 140 feet long, something like that. 
so from the center outward so that's a very large length from there to there it's a third of a football field in length I'm an example say um, right here referring to this video um, each blade on this commercial turbine is about 135 feet long from the tip to the hub center so the tip follows a circular path of 850 feet and that's found by the radius multiplied by 2 so you get the overall diameter and the diameter times pi and that gives diameter times pi as a circumference of the circle so the, it's basically the path in feet of the tip of the blade so it's the length of the blade which is basically the radius of the circle you take the radius of the circle times 2 to get the diameter and the diameter times pi which is 3.14159265 so on is the relationship between the diameter and the circumference so you multiply that out and you get 850 feet approximately so the blade makes one complete revolution in about four seconds according to the video so the angular speed of the tip is about 800 feet 850 feet per four seconds because it goes takes four seconds so if it travels that far it's doing 212 and a half feet per one second that's just reducing it by four and this equates to a tip speed of about 145 miles per hour 212 and a half feet per second to give you an idea 70 miles an hour on the highway is 102 feet 8 inches per second so if it's 212 and a half feet which is about twice as much a little bit more than it should be twice 70 miles per hour and it is 145 the direct conversion one mile per hour is 22 fifteenths feet per second that changes it over quick and easy Um, as you can imagine, at very high wind speeds, the turbine blade receives maximum stress, which increases the risk of failures. You kind of think about the angular momentum and how much force is actually pulling on the blade from the tip all the way up to the root, because it's basically the tip is moving around 150 or so miles per hour. There's a lot of pull on that blade, and it is very heavy, so they have to be structurally balanced. Um, everything has to be checked out when you're doing maintenance. There's a lot to consider with the larger wind turbines um, when thinking about the, the risks that, are, that can occur if maintenance is not done properly. And also the tip speed ratio is the ratio between the blade tip and the wind speed itself. So it gives you an idea based on how quickly the wind is blowing, I guess it would be straight into this image, because we're looking at the front of it. It's a relationship between how quickly it's blowing into it and the resultant speed of the tip of the blade. Here we can see the blade rotating. Okay, so understanding the concept of this to figure out the tip speed based on the number of revolutions that occur, you can calculate through a really simple process. Just take the blade tip and multiply it by two, or the, the blade length, excuse me, from the root to the tip multiply it by 2 to get the overall diameter of the swept area then multiply it by pi to get the circumference or the path that the tip follows and then take its rate so how long it takes to actually complete one revolution and you put the 
overall length divided by how long it takes, then simplify or reduce, and then use the conversion 22 fifteenths to change it from feet per second to miles per hour. So it's a little more, it's easier to understand miles per hour than it is feet per second. And this would be around um, 233 or so kilometers an hour. And also, also should let you know that uh, the ratio, tip uh, speed ratio of around six or seven is considered to be optimal. So if the wind speed coming in is 20 feet per second, then this should be rotating six to seven times faster than that. Also, the fewer the blades a horizontal axis wind turbine has, the faster they need to turn in order to harvest the same amount of power as a design with more blades. And the reason why that has to do with the torque and the number of blades changes that. If there are more blades, um, that basically means there is more torque, so it does not it's not required to turn as fast to be the same amount of power. Um, you may recall from physical science or some intro to physics courses that torque and the rate, the product of those, is what um, makes up power. So power is equal to torque times its rotational speed. And there are other conversions depending on what, if you're wanting to find watts or you're wanting to find horsepower or something like that. But basically that's what that means. So if you have less blades, you have less overall torque acting on the shaft. So you will need to actually rotate it faster to have the same amount of power because again the torque multiplied by its rotational speed is what makes up power what produces the power so as an example a three blade turbine does not need to turn as fast as a two blade turbine to produce the same amount of power and there is a problem with this once if you wanted to have a wind turbine rotate very slowly and produce a lot of power, you would need so many blades that they would actually interfere with one another as they rotated. And it would actually cause more inefficiencies to have, say, more than four or five blades. And that's why you usually see wind turbines with two, three, four blades, maybe five blades, and no more than that. The rate used to specify the cut-in and cut-out speeds of a rotor are in revolutions per minute, or the RPM. And basically that means that the cut-in speed is the speed of the wind that is ideal for the wind turbine to start generating power. So it will turn on, it will either release a brake and change its, its blade pitch so that it begins to rotate or it will actually, if it's just an ordinary solid design, it will just begin to rotate at that speed and produce power at a certain point. The cutout speed is, has to do with safety and also inefficiencies. Once it goes past a certain point, it's wear and tear on the rotor and the, the, the rest of the assembly. And they, it needs to be shut down, so they furl the blades um, maybe even lock the rotor in place and wait for the wind speeds to reduce to optimal levels. So again, the cut-in speed is the slowest speed at which the rotor can turn and still produce electrical power, as it should. The cut-out speed is the fastest speed the blades are allowed to turn, and that's relating to um, the wind speed, I guess, in RPM. is a way to look at it. Um, of course if the wind speed increases the RPM goes up. 
So the cut-in speed, as far as the rotor is concerned, is the slowest speed which the rotor can turn and still produce electrical power, which has to do with the wind speed that's actually blowing against it. And the cutout speed is the fastest speed the blades are allowed to turn in RPM, and that's an effort to prevent damage. So once the wind speed becomes too great, it will overspeed the rotor, and that's when it needs to be shut down. Introduction to designs. There are many properties considered when designing a wind turbine airfoil alone. The best suited materials for the blade performance and the overall strength. Remember, with the larger blade, it was rotating, it had tip speeds of over 100, 125 miles per hour, even more, it was 145 in the example. The best suited materials for it would be like reinforced, um, lightweight, fiberglass or other composition. So you need to con uh, consider what type of material needs to be used. And that's how designers put it to how they, what they consider. Maybe wood for smaller designs, plastic, metal, just depends. Um, the shape of the blade is designed to produce a suitable amount of power for a wide range of wind speeds since that's what we deal with. We never have wind that's right around 10 miles per hour throughout the day. It ranges, so the blades are designed to be best suited for a, a range of wind speeds. The number, size, and shape of the blades depend on the quantity of electrical power that the turbine needs to produce. So how many blades there are, their overall size, how they're designed, their shape is dependent upon how much power needs to be generated. Generally if you need more power, um, you go with the two to five blade design usually you don't want more than that and you increase the overall length and the shape of the blades in order to increase power so the length of the blades is increased and its design shape is changed and remember blade pitch control is used to control power output at a given wind speed also and it also helps to slow down the rotor during high winds if you remember from the previous or from the slide a few few slides ago, the blades have a a critical angle where they harness the most amount of wind, but that critical angle changes as the wind speed increases, and that has to do with how the blades are actually slicing the air as the air passes through it. So the the angle of attack is changed on the blades by this pitch control system. It basically turns the blades just like you're turning your hand, you have your hand out flat and you're turning your wrist and your elbow and that changes the angle of um, changes basically the optimal level um, the optimal angle with the incoming wind speed so if the wind increases it changes its um, blade pitch slightly in order to make sure that it's at that critical angle and it's able to achieve the most efficient amount of power from the wind. Alright, to understand a little bit more about blade pitch control and its purpose, its function, um, as the blade first begins to turn during startup, the wind that the blade catches, I guess you could put it, is from a direct angle. However, as the blade begins to turn, the wind becomes the wind comes in from a slightly different angle. As you could imagine, as it starts out, it's the blade isn't moving and the wind is pushing against it. And then as the blade begins to move, it's actually slicing the air. The wind angle relative to the blade is called the apparent wind. The apparent wind is stronger than the true wind, but its angle is not as favorable. Thus, to maintain a good angle of attack on the airstream, the blade must be turned further from the true wind angle that is the actual angle of the wind coming in, an effort to compensate for the fact that the blade is slicing across that incoming airstream. Designers use the concept of stall, as mentioned before, to control the turbine speed and help prevent the generator from overloading or being overspun also. Remember, stall occurs when the turbine blade is flat against the wind and it no longer has any lift. In high winds, the turbine blade increased turbine blades increase their wind speed 
and the generator may overheat and be damaged. So you don't want to overspeed the, the wind turbine. Also the turbine blades and tower may be damaged as a result. Maybe a, a bearing pillow block or something else gets fatigued, overheated, or vibrations and something cracks and it eventually destroys the the entire structure or the entire assembly rather. There are two basic ways to control the speed of the wind turbine blades by pitch control and by stall control. Um, as mentioned before the angle of attack is the angle at which the wind strikes the turbine blade. That was five, six, I don't know, a little more than slides ago. <laughs> and blade pitch is the position or location of the blade with respect to the incoming wind, so it's its kind of its angle. As blade pitch changes, the surface area of the blade changes with respect to the wind flow. Just, you could imagine as the pitch changes, if you look straight at the turbine blade, in other words, it's like holding your hand straight out in front of you, flat, almost like you're waving at yourself, and then you rotate it at your elbow and your wrist, and you can see that the surface area, the overall width, appears to get smaller. Your hand appears to get smaller as you turn it. And that's what's going on with the blade. So the surface area actually decreases when the bl uh, b blades are pitched in that manner. Blade pitch um, is usually controlled on larger systems by um, a, con a control system and blade pitch on a horizontal axis wind turbine um, basically changes the angle of attack and this varies the speed of the wind turbine rotor and it's also used to make sure based on different winds or with different wind speeds that the critical angle is always achieved because the critical angle changes as the wind speed changes Blade pitch control is used to adjust the blades so the wind turbine is able to harvest the maximum amount of energy for, for different wind speeds. For most wind turbines, optimal the optimum wind speed for the best power output is around 30 miles per hour, which is 44 feet per second. And that's around 48 or so kilometers per hour. Uh, different types. Um, there are two main orientations for the wind turbine. There's the vertical axis and there's the horizontal axis and then there are specific vertical axis types and horizontal axis types. The Darius type vertical axis wind turbine looks like an egg beater. We talked about that in the first lesson. One advan advantage of the Darius type wind turbine is that it can harvest the wind from any direction. As you can see, since it rotates this way on a horizontal axis, it doesn't matter what way the wind is coming in, whether it's coming in from the north, south, east, east, northeast it doesn't make any difference, it will still rotate. The Savanius type vertical axis wind turbine is enhanced by different airfoils altogether. They sometimes incorporate vanes for directing wind into the device. As you can see, here's a Savanius type. Vertical axis wind turbines are not as efficient on large scales as horizontal axis wind turbines. Mainly smaller versions are used for residential use. So if you need to achieve a lot of power, a horizontal axis wind turbine is ideal. They actually developed some larger vertical axis wind turbines, but they didn't work out so well. It's nice that you didn't have to worry about the incoming wind. It would work no matter it would work with no matter what the direction of incoming wind was, they just didn't perform very well, so they abandoned those. Most large wind farm installations and larger wind turbines are horizontal axis type. 
and vertical axis usually for smaller residential use and they're they they're a lot quieter and they're used um, where noise would be a problem and also they perform well at lower altitude the larger more powerful wind turbines are usually horizontal axis wind turbines um, most definitely if they're very large like 500 kilowatt or above these are usually used in the large gradating wind farms across the United States and worldwide as you can see in the bottom picture so here's the egg beater Darius type the Savanius type and the ordinary horizontal axis wind turbine and it's of a tower construction design considerations the blade length the blade length determines how much wind power can be captured according to the swept area of the rotor so the larger the swept area the greater the amount of power also blade twist in order to understand blade twist I have to inform you about the need for blade pitch control for a blade to maintain a good angle of attack on the airstream, it must be turned further from the true wind angle in an effort to compensate for the fact that it's slicing the relative wind. So if you think about it, in addition to that, the closer you are to the tip of the blade, the faster it's slicing across that relative wind stream. So in order to uh, make up for that, they actually twist the contour, the profile of the blade as it goes towards the tip. They twist it just slightly. So the designers twist the tips further than at the root to make all portions of the blade more efficient because of the fact that the tip is slicing faster so it needs to have a slightly different angle, angle of attack basically. usually a twist of around 10 to 20 degrees overall from the root to the tip um, is what most designs would consist of the amount of twist the blade has must also be considered by designers in effort to not surpass manufacturing capabilities and to prevent loss of the blade strength and this twist in angle and overall design consideration is called the blade twist so that's the concept of blade twist. Also the aerodynamic properties. The blades have an aerodynamic profile to create lift which turns the rotor. Designers must take this into account when designing the blades. It has to do with drag coefficients and overall performance of the blade. The plan form shape, that is the overall shape of the blade gets narrow, narrower towards the tip and that maintains a consistent flow across the rotor swept area. This ensures that the wind passes through the turbine efficiently. It's not too fast causing some of the wind to not be utilized thus making losses and it's not too slowly which would create turbulence and also loss. So it gets narrow at, right, at the correct rate from the innermost part of the root and it gets thinner as it goes to the tip. Airfoil thickness. The thickness increases towards the root to make the overall structure stronger because there's more torque at the center of it. Flat back sections, as they are called, may be used near the root to, um, for more uh, aerodynamic efficiency. Going back to the number of blades and the rotational speed, the rotational speed is chosen so that the tips are moving at around 7 to 10 times the wind speed. On most horizontal axis wind turbines, there are usually no more than three blades, and that's especially true for the larger ones. Higher wind speeds and a higher number of blades means each blade must be narrower. This makes it harder uh, for them to be strong. 
At very high rotational speeds, the blades also start to become aerodynamically inefficient, very noisy and prone to erosions, bird strikes, and failures. Because the more blades that you have, it, as it rotates, the more likely it is to hit something. So they don't, the larger wind turbines especially have three blades, usually at the maximum, and that prevents, um, makes it uh, quieter and also better, more efficient. As I stated earlier, the more blades you have, the more inefficient it becomes because of the fact that you get a lot more turbulence. You also have the blades slicing the air too quickly, cutting the air too often and that makes it actually lose efficiency. So you think that oh, the more blades I put on there the more powerful it's going to get and that's not true. You will get a great amount of power to a certain point with an increased number of blades but once you go on go beyond a certain number depending on the length of blades and their design it actually becomes inefficient. Um, pitch control because the wind power vary so greatly with the cube of the wind speed. The turbine must be able to generate power in light wind and withstand the loads in much stronger winds. Therefore, the ab above the optimum wind speed, the blades are typically pitched either into the wind, which is feathering, or away from the wind, which is stall, to reduce the generated power and regulate the loads. Key terms for this Um, lesson would be, um, of course, aerodynamics, the airfoil, which is the blade and its design, um, angle, the angle of attack of the blade, um, blades itself, different types of designs and the concept of the blade, blade length, blade pitch, the pitch control systems, the profile of the blade, in other words, like its cutaway, its overall shape, as you can see, it was like an airplane wing, blade root, which is where it attaches to the hub, it's the center. Uh, part of the horizontal axis wind turbines rotor. The blade tip, blade twist, the closed loop control, which that's actually how they um, monitor the wind speed. What they do is they, they take the wind speed and the rotor speed and through a constant closed loop calculation of a computer, it constantly monitors the speed and rotation and corrects the blade pitch accordingly. And it's consistently checking to make sure that it's right at the um, angle that it needs to be for the particular wind speed. Also drag, furling, the horizontal axis wind turbine, lift, the lift to drag ratio, the planform shape, of the turbine blade, pressure, the rotational speed, speed as a general term, stall and what that means, the swept area, the tip speed, vertical axis wind turbines, and velocity. And with this the blade pitch and control that's mostly um, the horizontal axis wind turbines only a few <laughs> that I know of vertical axis wind turbines have a type of pitch control on them. It's usually like a, a prototype. Okay, for this lesson um, you should have done the reading or are currently reading the, the sections um, required for this lesson. Um, there's an assignment uh, the checkup assignment and you need to complete the quiz and that is all for module 2 lesson 2